I've always felt comfortable alone. It's not that I dislike people. I just have always enjoyed the company of myself. When it's quiet and when it's empty, I'm free to do anything. Free to go anywhere, say anything, and I keep myself company. It's nice. It wasn't always this empty here. I used to ride my bike to my elementary school every morning. One day, I got into an accident. I was fine, but over the course of a week or so, people started leaving. Sometimes, and I tend to keep this a secret, I think that maybe I just imagined all of those people who were in my life. This seems more real. This is better. I know this is real, because I'm here, now, right? This philosopher once said, Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Before my brother left, he told me a joke. He said, Locke and Descartes walk into a bar. After a few drinks, Descartes looks over at Locke and mutters drunkenly that nothing is real. Locke, annoyed, says, from my perspective, good sir, you and your brandy are right there, clear as day. Descartes condescendingly tells Locke, you are arrogant, sir. Even when sober, your senses cannot hope to empirically explore the unknown depths of our transient existence. Locke makes a comment about empirically exploring Descartes' mother, to which the philosopher replies in anger, I think not, and vanishes into a cloud of logic and ether. Or something like that. Sometimes I wonder if I pretend hard enough, everyone will just come back. Maybe Locke was right. You probably don't care that much about me. You came to hear about her. I saw her in the produce section. She was there. Real. I didn't know what to do, or what to say. She saw me. I know she did. Maybe she couldn't see me. Maybe I'm just trapped in the ether. Maybe... Maybe I'm not real. She's real. I tried finding her again, and it was a long time before I saw her. I wanted to do something, but I couldn't. I was alone. I wasn't free. I was trapped by her. Her books fell. I don't know how I did it. I picked them up. She looked at me. Her voice was just as beautiful and strange. She told me her name. I forgot it. I had forgotten my own name, so I made up a name to give her. Carl. What a stupid name. We were almost back when she stopped walking. She looked at me and told me she wanted to do something spontaneous. I said okay. She told me that she lived across the street. I told her 
I was amazed that I never saw her before. That I would... That I would have remembered someone like her. That made her smile. I like making her smile. As we ate, I felt like I needed to say something, but I didn't know what. After a moment, I remembered the book that fell out of her backpack. Psychology. And I remembered my brother's joke. I told it to her. She listened. I think I told it better that time. She laughed and asked me who I was more like, Locke or Descartes. I thought about it and told her Descartes. She seemed to like my answer, and after a moment she told me that she was also Descartes. That made me happier. She asked if I was worried that we might disappear, like in the joke, but it seemed to me like we were already disappeared. Besides, I couldn't, I couldn't have thought of someone I'd rather be disappeared with than her. She smiled again, longer this time. When it faded, she told me who she would rather be. Not Locke, but the bartender. She said Locke lived his life based on what he could see. Descartes lived his life based on what he could feel. But the bartender lived his life on sharing the experiences of everyone who walked in. And right now, she was sharing this experience with me. It was strange. I'd always felt comfortable alone. It's not that I dislike people. I just always enjoyed the company of myself. It was just so quiet. I was free to do anything, but I always wound up doing nothing. And now, I was scared, and I didn't know what would happen. But somehow, it still felt like I could do anything. This girl had opened up the world to me. But for some reason, despite her best efforts, still, all I could see was her. <laughs>